side effect of aspirin. So aspirin is actually irreversibly inhibit COX enzyme. So if it inhibit irreversibly COX1, then it means you are going to decrease the production or inhibit the production of prostaglindin E2, which is also called glycocalyx. So in GIT mucosa or gastric mucosa is protected by mucus, prostaglindin E2, which is called glycocalyx, and bicarbonate, and another one is gastrin, which stimulate mucosal growth. So there are four protections for the gastric mucosa. Mucus, glycocalyx, which is also called prostaglindin E2, bicarbonate and gastrin so now the gastric mucosa is replaced within uh, uh, within week okay or within just a few days the gastric mucosa is replaced now if you if we inhibit the cox1 enzyme we are it's mean we are inhibiting the production of prostaglindin e2 or glycocalyx and that is how uh, the muc the mucosal protection is going to be decreased and that will lead to gastric irritation gastric ulcer that ulcer can lead to gastric perforation and it can also lead to gastric hemorrhage. So that is the concept behind it. Now, synchronism, uh, this is the platelet membrane. The aspirin have acetyl group and aspirin will put their acetyl group into the platelet membrane and then our body is going to produce the antibodies against these platelet uh, which membranes have uh, acetyl group. Okay, now these antibody will attack on the platelet which will lead to thrombocytopenia but this antibody will also attack on the eight cranial nerve and that's why it will lead to tinnitus which means ringing in ear and there will be decreased hearing. So thrombocytopenia, tinnitus and decreased hearing is called synchronism. That is the concept we have to understand it, okay? Now, uh, so synchronism, okay? So thrombocytopenia, tinnitus which is mean ringing in ear and also decreased hearing is called synchronism. And synchronism can also be caused by quinidine and quinine. So aspirin, quinidine and quinine cause synchronism. Rare syndrome in children, uh, aspirin will cause rare syndrome. Uh, we use aspirin only for Kawasaki disease in children. And rare syndrome can also be caused by pregnancy and acetaminophen. Okay, acetaminophen toxicity, aspirin and pregnancy can cause rare syndrome in children. Now, uh, in children, okay, so aspirin induce asthma. As we already know that arachidonic acid is going to convert in by COX enzyme is going to form the prostaglindin. But another one, arachidonic, another pathway for arachidonic acid is lipooxygenase, lipooxygenase pathway which will form leukotriene. And this leukotriene is going to cause bronchoconstriction. So aspirin, aspirin, is, aspirin is going to inhibit the COX enzyme. Now arachidonic acid cannot form the prostaglindin. So the another, another pathway for arachidonic acid is like this. So more arachidonic acid is going to, uh, will pass through lipooxygenase pathway. It means there will be increased production of leukotriene. It means there will be increased the bronchoconstriction construction that is why we say sprain induced asthma okay now center 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 straight 10% of asthmatic patient with aspirin will develop this trade, okay? Like there will be asthma, aspirin hypersensitivity, which is called nasal secretion, bronchoconstriction, facial flushing, and nasal folipasis, okay? So you just have to understand this concept. If you inhibit the cox, arachidonic acid will going to form lipooxygenase, arachidonic acid will going to pass through lipooxygenase pathway to form more leukotriene, which will cause bronchoconstriction, okay? Overproduction production of leukotriene will induce asthma. This is the reason we have to understand by this. There are two pathways for arachidonic acid. Now, alkalosis and acidosis. First, there will be uh, there will be hyperventilation. Okay, there will be hyperventilation. Why there will be hyper hyperventilation? Because this aspirin is going to activate the respiratory center in the brain, and that is what will lead to hyperventilation. And because of this. You just mean that we are throwing out more carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide in our body will be decreased. As carbon dioxide is going to decrease, the pH will be increased. That is why we call it. And this carbon dioxide is going to be decreased because of this hyperventilation or increased respiration. And the pH will be increased. That's why we call it the past there will be respiratory alkalosis. But then after 12 after 12 to 24 hours, a sprain will disrupt tricarboxylic acid cycle. And if you, in, if you interrupt this cycle, it means now the pyruvate will not convert into acetyl-CoA, so the pyruvate will start to convert into lactic acid. And this lactic acid accumulation will form lactic acidosis. And now this is because of, this is, this is related with the metabolism, and so there, there, that's why we will say metabolic 
okay and acidosis mean that we are farming more lactic acid that is why first there is parietal colosis and then they will this aspirin is going to inhibit somehow we will say inhibit okay they will disrupt this tricarboxylic acid cycle there will be more acetylcholine now now so pyruvate will not convert into acetylcholine pyruvate will start to convert into lactic acid that is what will lead to lactic acidosis but now this acidosis is because of metabolism that's why we call it metabolic acidosis okay and bicarbonate is going to decrease so that's why we say that aspirin, aspirin first will cause alkalosis, respiratory alkalosis, then after 12 to 24 hour, aspirin is going to cause uh, metabolic acidosis. Now, hypertension and nephritis. Okay, this is Bumen capsule, this is afferent arteriole, and this is afferent arteriole. For the dilation of the afferent arteriole, we need prostaglindin. But aspirin is going to inhibit uh, the uh, prostaglindin synthesis or formation. So now aspirin arteriole cannot dilate. If aspirin arteriole cannot dilate, it means it's going to constrict. And if it is constrict, now the less blood will move into the Bumen capsule, and there will be less glomerulus filtration rate. Now it means that we are retaining the fluid in our body. And if you retain the retain the fluid in the body, that is what will lead to hypertension. Okay, and aspirin can also cause nephritis that is what we call interstitial nephritis so from this we understand that aspirin can be uh, we have to aspirin can be cautiously used in hypertensive patient and congested cardiac failure because aspirin will inhibit the production of prostaglindin and prostaglindin is needed for the aspirin arterial dilation so as no is no prostaglindin Okay, there will be constriction of the efferent arteriole, which will lead to decrease glomerulus filtration rate, and that's why we are retaining fluid in our body, which will exacerbate the hypertension. Now, the summary is like aspirin in gastric or peptic ulcer or gastric hemorrhage, okay, and there will be increased production of leukotriene, which will lead to asthma, and there will be antibodies production against the platelet, and so the platelet will be decreased. And there will be also uh, attack of the antibodies against the cranial neuron number 8. And so there will be tinnitus decrease hearing. That is what we call synchronism. In kidney, it is called interstitial nephritis. And it also exaggerates the hypertension. And first of all, the toxicity is going to call respiratory alkalosis. And then it will cause metabolic acidosis. But aspirin also stimulates the chemoreceptor trigger zone, which is present in the brain or medulla. And so there will be nausea and omitting. Okay. And the management of toxicity is supportive care and also IV sodium bicarbonate.